Here's Brody Brazil. What if I told you that precisely 20% of Major League Baseball teams are soon likely to start losing each tens of millions of dollars every single season? Because that possibility is probably closer to reality now that Major League Baseball has taken over the broadcasts for three more teams starting next season. The Twins, the Guardians, and the Brewers, they will join the Padres, the Rockies, and the Diamondbacks as teams that have lost their broadcast partner, in this case, Bally Sports and their family of networks. And now with the MLB streaming package, it's hard to fathom how these teams will make as much money as they used to. And when they're not making that money, they're probably not turning around and spending that money either on stadium stuff or player stuff or whatever as a functioning business. And we need to always take this time to remind you how imperative the local television and media rights deals are for Major League Baseball. Yeah, the national deals are important and ticket sales are important. In fact, 31% of MLB revenue from the 2023 season came from ticket sales. So there's nothing like getting people to the games, having them buy food and drinks and pay for parking and buy a jersey and all of that. But right behind ticket sales are the national media deals, which we're not talking about here, and the local and regional television deals, which we absolutely are talking about here. That income makes up about 23% of what baseball takes in, almost $11 billion every single year, or at least that was the number via Sportico and Brooksgate for 2023. So this is a significant piece of the pie for now, six of 30 Major League Baseball teams. Let's go back to this article by Evan Drellick of The Athletic. This is when Diamond Sports Group, the operator of the Bally Sports Networks, basically said they're going to have to cut back on their contracts or maybe renegotiate. And the only one they would be keeping for sure was that of the Atlanta Braves. Diamond Sports Group appears to be threatening to drop Virtually every MLB team in its portfolio besides the Atlanta Braves, barring renegotiation of the deals on more favorable terms, Uh, favorable to the networks, right? Not to the teams. The court hearing on Wednesday where that message was delivered left the baseball television world in some chaos. Jim Bromley, a lawyer for MLB, said the league had no idea Wednesday's news was coming. The news that basically of the 12 different teams serviced by Bally Sports Networks, that Bally would only be keeping one of them and basically moving on from the other 11. Quote, we had no information about what is being done, Bromley said. It's unfortunate that we've been sandbagged in this way, end quote. The drama came Wednesday in a status update hearing, which saw Diamond file a revised get-out-of-bankruptcy plan to the court right when the hearing began. Sounds like the Diamond Sports Group is trying to literally get away from broadcasting on the diamond. And the Bally Sports profile, it's been huge. Here it was basically at its peak in 2023 when Arizona was still a thing, San Diego was still a thing, and you're also noticing here basketball and hockey teams depicted as part of these networks. It remains to be seen how Bally's going to handle these other properties, but we know right now that they're kind of escaping the baseball side of their operations and game broadcasts and pre- and post-game studio shows, so... Things are developing here pretty quick, and the Twins, Guardians, and Brewers, they're just the latest latest examples of teams moving on to now part of a Major League Baseball production and streaming and broadcast package. So Minnesota, Cleveland, and Milwaukee, they all had deals with Bally, which expired after the 2024 season. And that's why Bally's basically said, we're kind of done here, so those three teams have moved on. MLB, because they've taken on the Twins, Guardians, and Brewers, they now have control of six teams, including, like I said before, the Padres, Diamondbacks, and Rockies. There's also the Texas Rangers, which are looking for a new broadcast home. They're not so quick to turn to MLB to take over their streaming product and their broadcast product. They're still exploring their local options first, but they might become a seventh team in Major League Baseball to disconnect from its broadcast partner. And so we talk about the money stuff. Like, what's the big deal here? I know know people would say, why is this important? Because take a look at these three teams, what the Twins used to get, what the Guardians used to get, and what the Brewers used to get as part of their deals. This is all reported by MLBTradeRumors.com. The Twins in 2023, we don't have 24 numbers, 54 million is what the Twins took in from Bally Sports, 
to broadcast the game. It's the broadcast rights. That was the the piece of the pie I was talking about earlier, about 25%. So 54 million is to the Twins maybe about a quarter of what they bring in every year in terms of revenue. For the Cleveland Guardians, 2023, their reported number was $55 million. And for the Brewers, $33 million. We only have the 2022 numbers. You'd have to kind of extrapolate and figure out what it might have been or might not have been in 23 and 24. But those numbers are actually quite small compared to most other teams. They're getting anywhere from 75 to $150 million per team due to their broadcast, their local broadcast rights deal. Well, here you have three teams that weren't making a lot. So now that they've moved on to a baseball product and kind of producing and broadcasting their own games, can they actually make as much money back? Well, the answer here from MLBTradeRumors.com suggests maybe not. Having less commitment with Diamond Sports going forward will increase the viability of that streaming plan over the years to come. However, as mentioned, less TV revenue figures to have a sizable impact on the short-term economics of the game. This will lead to ripple effects throughout the upcoming offseason and what will likely be worrisome for some players hitting the open market in coming weeks. Right? It's very important to now pay attention to those teams that don't have a broadcast deal anymore. Are they going to spend any different because they're probably not bringing in as much money as they used to or it's not certain yet that they will? New deals could be negotiated between now and the 2025 season, the, de- the broadcast deals, which could put some money back on the table, though likely less than in previous years. So my takeaways are like this. Let's do some math. Can Major League Baseball do streaming packages for each of its teams? Like, let's just take, uh, let's take the Twins, $50 million bucks. Can they get $50 million? Or the Guardians, can they get about $50 million back? Can the streaming packages generate that? Well, to do that, you'd need 250,000 subscribers, each paying a $200 a year fee, which would get you to $50 million. And there are some other costs, like if you're doing the games, now you're paying for production, but you could also take in all the sponsorship money that goes with it. So maybe the subscriber number could come down, or maybe the subscription fee could come down if there's a boatload of sponsors bringing in revenue. But basically, can baseball, with its teams, can each of them generate the same type of revenue that they used to be making with their regional broadcast partner? It's an uphill battle. And the benefit is that, yeah, eventually you take control over it. You have full say. It's your thing. And if you group a bunch of these teams together, maybe you have a package. Maybe you buy the rights to like half the league's games, but it's not in your control which teams are part of that overall package. Is this the future of Major League Baseball on television? At least from the regional sense, right? That you're buying into maybe all the regional games and baseball produces the games, not a regional sports network. But you can kind of see for these teams, this is kind of entering into uncharted and unproven and potentially like vulnerable territory. Who knows how much they'll able to generate revenue wise doing these streaming packages on their own. Could we see a half and half thing where 15 of the teams are on this MLB service and done by MLB and the other half are still on the traditional model? How's it going to go? We know that Rob Manfred and the commissioner's office, they want to try and get everybody in on a same package, but that's going to be hard to get everybody to agree to something new and certainly something that maybe doesn't have the upside as the way the industry used to be. So next season, the Twins, the Guardians, and the Brewers, they will be three of six total teams now, maybe more, maybe even seven by the start of next year, that are producing their own broadcasts and the programming that goes along with it. MLB is taking this over. But again, what is that ripple effect? And how much should we really pay attention to how these teams spend and the other three teams spend versus the rest of the league? Because their income might be greatly changing in the years and seasons to come. You made it here to the end of this video. I really appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. That greatly helps me in this video and this channel. And quick, before it ends, I would really love it if you just take one second, go down there, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. That way I definitely get to see you back here next time.